I think it's important to talk about today because you know this is afternoon delight and we love we love Bournemouth, Subu, uh, Nerve Media, <laughs> Nerve Media. Um, it's important to talk about the Subu elections, right? What do we think about the Subu elections? I don't know anything about the Subu elections. Well, it's you know Does we pick matter? we yes, of course it matters. This is this is I your student like government. The they have so like much power over everything that happens here, and their opinions do matter. No, they don't. If you love them now, you'll hate them in a couple of weeks because there are <laughs> posters everywhere. And you'll be tearing them down. They'll be on the floor. If you don't like litter, you're in for a big, big, big shock. I want to make it into like a, a Nazi propaganda type of thing, where they, they're tearing down the enemy propaganda and everything. <laughs> and then there's a night of a thousand knives. Wait, <laughs> le- there's a market there. You can, you can. <laughs> there's a market there. You can um, uh, be a freelance sort of saboteur and say yeah. you want to win. Any, anyone <laughs> who wants to go for the elections, you can just hire me, and I'll, I'll, I'll do you think, every post down. Do you think Nerve Media Magazines has sort of like affiliations? <laughs> sort of bias, political <laughs> student bias. Slightly right wing. <laughs> but I was um, downstairs and there were this sort of people talking and it was um, all of the people why they should be president, vice president, lackey, whatever. And one of them really annoyed lackey. me. That's the name that's, of yeah, one that's, of the position, yes. lackey. Well, if you're not president, you're essentially a lackey to the president. That's the way I see it. Do you know not what lackey no, means? No, I've never heard that word in my life. It's oh, a political term. No, well, not no. at all. Just a crazy it's like someone who... who. How would you explain this word to someone who does not uh, know what it means? No someone someone who doesn't matter and is just sort of a tool Yeah. to, okay. to, to a, a higher power. That's not particularly important. But to the public, it may seem important. So, like the Subu <laughs> structure. But um. Peasant with power. A peasant with power. A peasant with a gun. <laughs> it's a good situation what to be saying, in. Simon? But um, yeah. So this girl, she was preaching. I don't know her name. I don't think I want to know. Preaching. And yes, yeah, well, that's what it is. You're preaching for votes. Preaching for some sort of recognition, so that you can be a Subu lackey. And um, she was talking about, she was talking about how she doesn't want Subu to be uh, to be for the university. She wants it to be for us. She wants to empower the students. It was it was Isn't really that the point of Subu? it was really epic. Isn't the really, point of Subu for the power of the students. Yes, she was essentially saying, "I'm going to do the same thing that current Subu's doing, and everyone else is aiming to do." Yes, oh. and then she continued to but say, pointing it out. Yeah. She was uh, continuing to say, oh, I love Bournemouth. I really, really love Subu and Bournemouth and just having a part in it. But this isn't going to be my Bournemouth. I'm just going to be a small part of your Bournemouth. She should have said this, I hate Boscombe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boscombe's horrible. No, but when she said that, my cringe meters just went off the scale. I mean, Jesus, some people really sell themselves for this. And that's fine to want to be part of something, but really, if you want to appeal to a student, I mean, what would you guys, if you if you were honestly considering getting into this sort of uh, Subu lock, what would you guys want to hear? Free beer. All the time. Free beer. I'd be happy with that. I tend to walk away from people who kind of come at me with crazy, like slogans and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> approach you in a bizarre manner. You're like, what are you going to talk to me about? Not sure I want to hear it. No, I, I don't know. I think. Um, as a, as a student, you, you kind of want to be heard, I suppose, but it doesn't really matter because it's all, you know, we're not going to get heard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really great optimistic yeah. note yeah. we're putting on there. Um, I've forgotten. Well, I haven't forgotten. I was just waiting till this moment to bring it up. The umbrella subject for today's episode of Afternoon Delight will be... be, be Is it metal? No, it's not metal. Is it wood? No, it's in fact, uh, it's almost oh like God. I don't have this prepared. But you'd be surprised because because afternoon delight You've goes through. You said three things that could be the umbrella. Camels. Subject. No, camels. Ca- camels are good camels things. Are camels, yeah. Yeah. No, yes, it's resourcefulness. The idea of taking what you can to uh, get you by and make the most of stuff. Act that- isn't really a thing. It's isn't like... really a thing. <laughs> <laughs> today, today the umbrella subject is global snork. Um, really, a, you can't grab resourcefulness. 
No, you can't a, physically touch resourcefulness. It's not a physical manifestation. No, but you can employ it to get through life's various challenges. And that's what we do here. We help people overcome things. Okay? Yeah, sure. Moral st- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enthusiasm. Um, yeah, you bring so... the best in me, Simon. Bring the best in me. <laughs> but I... I do want to have hope for Subu presidents and stuff. No, I'm good. I'm okay. good with it. I'm just asking if you want. Yeah, yeah. Being resourceful, you know, you're like. Yeah, Adam see, oh, Adam gets it. Adam gets it. I was just checking if the the, the mics were actually on. Yeah. Because yes. He's done that That'd before. Be I have done it before. <laughs> there is potential be that everyone is just hearing dead air, but no, I'm pretty certain we can be heard. Um. So, oh, you shouldn't say on on the radio. You really shouldn't. It's poor. What? Poor conduct. I keep saying um, like um. Uh, um. Okay. Um. The it's reason. The reason I'm thinking about no it. One's listening. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> listening. That that's where the swear word would fit in for me. So my um moment, my pause moment, is where I'd swear while I'm thinking about my next word. <laughs> but you're not gonna swear. Can't do that on the radio. You're not gonna swear. <laughs> we don't swear here at Afternoon ask Delight. From the full time electorate. We don't curse. We don't blaspheme. Swear. We don't affiliate with any political organisations. I've already mentioned the Nazis. Yeah, <laughs> didn't take long. Not this, not this well, show. No, it, didn't. I, it wasn't like I was comparing anyone to the Nazis. No, I think you were comparing. No, I wasn't. You were comparing the oh. Subu to the Nazis. No, I was. <laughs> now you're putting words in my mouth. <laughs> but um, no, the reason I think about Urs and Oms is because recently um, Adam will be able to relate, and most courses will be able to relate. Presentations. God, I hate. Oh, I'm not a fan of presentations. I didn't presentation. You've done or did or did it. Okay, how'd it go? I'm all right. R- all right. Are you happy with it? Yeah. Wow. Best in class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just naturally yes, amazing. I got best in class. I, I, I'm sure you 100. did. 100. King of class. You got 100%? Yeah. Nice. I didn't think people actually best obtained that. Yeah, I, that's, it's more because di- I banged the teacher. <laughs> 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 I got 100 in that, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's but it's it's kind of uh, <laughs> it's difficult to get hundred in script writing because, well, first of all, Phil doesn't like films. I've already voiced this opinion on air. I don't think he likes films. He just likes killing them. I like Phil. Um, I just think that's the way he works. I think it's problem. The problem is, is everybody kind of has their own perception of what a good film is. Yeah. And most films to Phil are not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Especially the one doing? we write. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pick little holes in it. That's it. okay. But Isn't um, that the point though, you don't want positive feedback all the time. I've said this so many. Yeah, times. yeah, no, no. There you is a point in feedback. constructive feedback. I agree. To get you used to the failures of your life. <laughs> <laughs> to get you used to being a failure. Oh, well, that that's how I see it. No, I agree, and he does mock fairly. I would prefer it's a just, lecturer to I'm, always shout at me saying I'm horrible than saying oh that's great and then let me you know just think everything yeah. I'm doing is alright no I agree wholeheartedly it's just that I think Phil as a person which allows him to do this job doesn't like films which I think's the best sort of position to be in when scrutinising them definitely like I, I don't like uh, a lot of mainstream music so I've got all the opinions in the world when it comes to T-Pain and Kanye West and a girl's allowed still contemporary. I think they're still around. Yeah, they're around. Yeah, they but they're ridiculously expanded. old now. I don't know. They've definitely gone past their peak hotness. It's kind of gone <laughs> way down. They're and that's, that's how you've got to rate them. But um, I had some of Girls Allowed stuff was okay. And I will admit that. Much like I'm a big fan of S Club 7. Sound of the Underground. <laughs> what a record. S Club 7 are amazing. Uh, yeah, S Club 7 are don't impeccable. S Club Kids. Was it S Club 8? Yeah, they that. Don't stop. No, they disappointed me. You can't. Beats. On two of them in the Saturdays now, I think, or something. It's like yeah. Five. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Wow. Crazy. Why are you filling out. Let me, let me explain this to the audience because this isn't a visual medium. Jack has become so disenchanted and bored, he started to fill out a crossword. I'm not filling out a crossword. What are you Sorry, doing? Top hat and a moustache on a football player. Oh, okay, nice. I'm a child. What's what's his name? <laughs> give give me the magazine. Stephen We're going to talk about this guy. A Bournemouth manager. We're going to no, talk no, about this dude, player. Steve Fletcher. I'm sure all of you are familiar with good old Steve Fletcher boy. You know the Fletchenheim, Stevie Wonder. 
not you know born this dynamite yeah there's a reason why I drew the top hat and the moustache yeah because he's he's a he's a big icon here at BU no 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 it's because it's from the Victorian ages (laughs) okay and I saw an advert for chimney sweeps oh yeah let's let's make that seamless link (laughs) <laughs> it's beautifully played. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Um, uh, you've an interesting I'm story. <laughs> you've an interesting story, Jack. Yeah, I was walking here and I saw an advert for chimney sweeps in a car. Ironic. It is. It is a bit sort of. It was. Odd. It was an A4 piece of paper. It wasn't like a big advert. Yeah, yeah. Like not that. a billboard. No. <laughs> it was just an A4 piece of paper tapped inside someone's tapped taped in someone's car. It was a picture of like a normal like Cockney. Chimney sweep. Yeah. Just saying. And Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, and I don't remember the rates. I think it was twenty five pound per hour, twenty five pound per service. I don't know which one it was. If we advertise them, are we doing? Are we being bad? I don't know. I I, I think we should get paid. Really. I'm yeah, I agree. To, so have like a room full of kids when he's just gonna you know <laughs> loose on people's chimneys. <laughs> I don't think we should advocate that. Well, thing advocate. is though. Regardless of child labour, <coughs> I do like being paid. So if you're listening out there, any organisation, screw it. If you're selling um, babies of which you have stolen from maternity wards, we'll advocate it if there's something in it for us. So keep that in mind. I don't, <laughs> as long as it's not like a free baby, I don't want... Cash free. in hands. Cash yeah, in yeah. I think, I think when dealing with babies, it is... There's no sort of two ways about it. It's no credit it. cards. It's sort of straight up the money. But um, when when I was thinking about this uh, odd advert you saw, I couldn't invest in that product without immediately thinking of like Mary Poppins singing and dancing. Is there like an extended Jim, Jimmy, rate Jim, for? Jiminy, yeah. Jim, Jim, Chiru. Chiru. Well, it's Chiru, then it's Chiru. Um, okay. Regardless. This is uh, this is I think the next step, right? Adding a sort of event, a sort of simulating a Mary Poppins experience, <laughs> whilst cleaning your chimneys. I think that's where they should be heading, and that's free that, advice. It's not really enough chimneys in the world. The weird thing is, a century ago, that advert would have been really useful. Why? Because there were a lot of chimneys, and people had their chimneys cleaned. That's when Mary Poppins was set. So okay. We well, I th- I thought, uh, no, I thought you were gonna have some sort of no, seriously, no, no, that that advert would have been yeah, very well, relevant to its time period. It, it's only taken it would, years. it would be relevant. It would be relevant. One hundred years, Simon. Now there's no chimneys in the world. None at all. <laughs> all chimneys are extinct. No. See, I feel, I feel sorry for him because I reckon this is a man. He's had a hard time. He's probably lost his job, and he thought, "What can I do?" What, what, what trade can I go into? And then he slowly <laughs> turns to his chimney in the corner of the living room. Sad music I like plays. To, I like to think of it as like a family business, and yeah. it, it's like it's just dying out. <laughs> it's either that, or he got the idea like over Christmas and thought, "Oh, the last person down there was Father Christmas. He's making a mint. Why not? I'll do it." As well. <laughs> Boom. I'll I'll go up your chimney. No presents. Maybe the business is Santa Claus. Maybe it is. And he just cleans it when he goes down because he's pretty fat. Yeah. That's yeah. It's like how they used to clean chimneys with cats. That's a great observation. To, or birds. They used to throw birds down chimneys. Mm. That, I, think what? I still do that. <laughs> but not for cleaning it. I just ha- like having fun. I love. I can imagine the sound. You no, yeah, the the, the like bird. The, like they used to get a goose or a duck, and then they throw it down the chimney. It would flap and clean the chimney. Can we can we save this conversation? Could you get a bit nearer the mic? Yeah. Could we save this conversation for after the next two songs? Hey, and for those of you wondering, the next two songs will be Propane Nightmares by Pendulum and I Can Talk by Tudor Cinema Club. No, um, Tudor Cinema Club, who, coincidentally, were in Boscombe yesterday. Okay, let's go. No. We're back. Hello. Um, just a quick apology in case we uh, offended anyone or raised any topics that might make people irate in the last sort of link we were it was all for the sake of humor and we take all responsibility and nerve nerve radio uh and subu of course are completely impartial and neutral on all topics okay so we were also going to talk about what was it what was my sort of rotor we mysteries we're talking about mysteries the mammoth the mammoth oh yeah the mammoth 
Tell us about the mammoth, Adam. This was interesting. I found this interesting. On my daily, every morning, I wake up and I have a good check of all the papers, you know, keep, keep up to date with uh, what, the what's going on in the world. And um, I saw in the, I think it was The Sun, a wonderfully reliable newspaper, which is yeah. just about, you know, seven days a week, actually, I think this week. And they had a, um, a woolly mammoth caught on tape in Siberia crossing a river. So I just, yeah, I thought... That's quite an interesting story because obviously they've been extinct for a few years. <laughs> oh, the mammoths are making a comeback. They're making a comeback. They're, they're back. But really? Oh, really? Was it actually just a picture you saw? No, it was a video. Um, basically, what looked like an elephant crossing a, a river. I've what got a video I want to talk about later, but let's let's keep on this. So, first of all, um, we're lucky to have our resident archaeologist, Mr. Jack Martin Jones, hey. here. How are you doing? Let's ask you about possibility. Is it possible? No. At all? No. <laughs> so, you're not even going to entertain the idea well, that it could okay. potentially Let's happen. En- uh, well, I don't want to... Humour it. Because every time you ever go, well, we have a resident archaeologist here, I start going about archaeology, then you go, boring, and then I, well, I can't I go think, on anymore. I think I'm trying to help you as an archaeologist okay, to fine. make it interesting. Okay. Jazz it up. I thought there's there's been brief periods of time when mammoths disappeared and reappeared in the archaeological. See, that's record, interesting. You're doing well. But that doesn't mean they just died out and then suddenly reappeared. It just means there's no evidence of them being in those periods. How do people so, know when a um, sort of creature's died out completely, is completely extinct? How are we certain? Or are we never certain? Because we're pretty confident the mean, dodo's gone. That is one of. The- Am I sounding dumb? Dense. With the dodo bit, yeah. Yeah, no. I'm <laughs> saying how do how do professionals verify that an animal, a creature, has completely become extinct? When there's well, no evidence of them anymore. Yeah, but that the world's a big place. No, no bones, no carcasses, no evidence of habitat, no evidence of eggs or any type of offspring, no evidence of a fall in their dietary habits. Mm-hmm. If the, if like if they eat a certain thing and then the thing just starts getting higher up, like there's more of them, that means uh, okay. that the people the things yeah. eating them probably died out. Okay. With mammoths, they pretty much disappear from the record, like ten thousand BC, except huh. like a small one in like four thousand BC on an island. Well, you heard it here first. So it's Nothing's not, necessarily it's totally not a Nothing is necessarily extinct The dodo could was? just be hiding You thought it looked like I, I thought I had a little look at it I think I looked at it like Three or four times And I think it's a bear With a very big fish in its mouth mm. it's, a, it's like a trunk sized fish I would admit But it's possible Because the way it, the way it moves Kind of looks like a bear If I were you guys On the other end of the screen um, At home <clears> Listening <throat> to Nerve Media intently I would search up this video Bear or mammoth? Yeah, yeah that's the mammoth. question. That is the question, though. Well, why does it matter? Well, it would be a pretty big discovery if a mammoth came back. Yeah, but then if there was... Well, it wouldn't have come back, though. It's just been <laughs> yeah, hiding Yeah, it's, it's just been <laughs> hiding. Yeah, but it would take people by surprise. No lives. The thing is, so much of Siberia is inhospitable to man. So yeah. is there anything to say that they couldn't be living in an area where man can't reach? Ooh, what do you think of the Bermuda Triangle? Because it confuses me. What do you? What this? What this? Confuse? Well, no, I cannot. We're all aware of the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. Is it a large space? I'm not. I'm not too sure. Do you mean a large? What do you uh, mean by large space? You mean like a North large America's area cover? pretty large. How is it like a small island? Is it um a it's cluster a, of islands? It's, it's a series. Cluster, it's a cluster of islands, and it kind of it's just like a triangle where there's like mostly ocean. Okay. And it's just like this dead area, like where planes have gone through. Yeah. They've apparently crashed. Well, like. the myth is, and I'm not too too knowledgeable on the subject because I don't care that much, um, that no one's been there, or no one's come out alive, or that it's just completely un un sort of. Well, people have been there and come back. Yeah. And just said it's not interesting. Well, no, it has Bermuda. It has pink sand. That's interesting. Oh, proper pink, like fluorescent, yeah, pink like sand. baby pink. Yeah, it's like baby pink sand. I think a lot of the mystery of it is to do with the weather uh, and the weather fronts and the storm well, fronts. Back back in like the ninth, uh, early 20th century, planes used to crash there every so often because of the weather and the stuff that they used to like guide them wasn't very sof- sophisticated, so it kind of got thrown out of whack. 
It could be extra I'm just putting a downer on all wonderment in the world. <laughs> oh, that's all right, because we're going to uh, go 10 unsolved mysteries, and Jack here, uh, I challenge you to oh, solve them all. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, there's a few, which... <laughs> there's a lot of um, archaeology going on in them, actually. Oh. But the one that interested me the most was... Um, I think it was back in 1976. We received signals from... Out, I think it was in the... Um, I think it's the Sagittarius. Is it the Sagittarius star system? So yeah, why not? <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> one. that's my star sign. Clock. But basically, yeah, they um, back. I think it was 1976. I can't remember the man's name, but oh. he um, he basically received radio transmission um, from aliens. From what could be aliens, but it happened on a frequency where hydrogen, obviously, because hydrogen makes up the majority yeah. of the yeah. atmosphere um, or f- across the whole uh, galaxy. But it happened on a frequency where life could occur with that much hydrogen if that makes sense okay it's kind of yeah. kind of complicated but it's yeah basically <coughs> the frequency that it occurred at was it, it couldn't it could either be life or it could be some crazy cosmic explosion but so the unsolved mystery so is they found it is it a cosmic explosion or could it be something more well, that's not so much of a mystery as a question yeah which hasn't been solved okay but no they basically they tried to look for it again they tried to look for this um this, this source, spot, this source, and um, they they had the same kind of uh, reaction, but it would stop and then start, stop and then start. So what they reckon is whatever it is in that area uh-huh. is almost as it's rotating, it's beaconing out on one side of its orbit, and then on the other side, when it's orbited around the other side, there's no obviously we're not catching anything coming back the other way. I like this as a feature, uh, posed Jack. Um, uh, unsolvable questions oh, and see how he answers. What you want me to, to let's solve let's this. have it a bit quick fire. So here's here's the unsolvable thing: <laughs> is it an explosion or is it hydrogen? Zach, Jack, go answer it. Wait, is it an explosion or is it hydrogen? Or is it a free? Or is it you mean you mean a free? Okay, okay, fine. Oh, oh sorry. How yeah. How far is it? How far is it? Um, it how far did they say it was? Hundred and twenty light years. Oh, so walking distance. Um. Probably an explosion. Okay, done. Moving on. Next mystery. <laughs> okay. Because I'm an archaeologist <laughs> and I know. <laughs> the Nazca lines. What are these? Heard of these. Yeah. Basically, nope. they're um, it's it's South America, Peru, I believe. If I get it right. Um, basically, we've got loads of lines that have been, could have been man-made, could have not been man-made. Who knows? Mm-hmm. That are only visible from space. And they're done on a grand scale. So if you well, on the ground level, on the floor, digging these lines, you'd have to have a crazy sort of um, bird's eye view to be able to design it in the way it's been do- designed. So whatever mm. it was, it was assigned to the gods or assigned to... I'm pretty sure they've something. been proven that it was man-made. Yeah. yeah. So so the mystery is... Man-made. Are they man-made or not? They were man-made. And it's been confirmed they're man-made. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, next mystery, go. The Zodiac Killer. You're doing well, Zach, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Never. It was just again. This is just one of those things. Never been solved. Still a mystery. The Zodiac Killer. Never Zodiac been Killer. solved until today. What was Are this? you about to solve the Zodiac Killer? Was was basically it? a man went on a mass murdering spree. Oh. and Sent four letters, owning up to the murders, but he did it all in code. Oh. He only managed to decipher one of the letters, mm. um, which found out where he lived, but they still haven't found him. So the mystery, the mystery was, do they exist? And if they do, can they be so read? So the mystery is, there was a really smart guy who killed some people. <laughs> yeah, I think I, you've I been so sure. That. Like you've compared. So it that happened, and he just had a crazy code. <laughs> you've compared that to a mysterious frequency received in 1976. I'm loving this feature. I'm loving this feature. Away. But in the next 10 seconds, we're going to be playing another song because that's what we do here. We play songs. We love music. We're a big fan of sound and all of that junk. So, for you today... Oh, and by the way, something to look forward to. Adam's going to think of our song. A song that we're going to play at the uh, last, our choice. Well, Adam's choice. And it's going to be a good one. He's promised me it's going to be one hell of a tune. Okay, so we're going to be starting with The Charming Man by The Smiths, then moving on to All in White by The Vacasins. We're back. This is Afternoon Delight you're listening to and hopefully enjoying. So we're going to continue with the Unsolved Mysteries presented by our very, very good guest so far, Adam. 
Bart Bartlett. 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 Yeah, I got it. See? <laughs> and Jack is going to either disprove them or just generally be cynical about all s- signs of well, can, mystery. You can destroy me if you like. Uh, I've like, approved no. a one. Huh? I've approved a one. Yeah, true, true. That's, but you've... That, you've there's been three. Yeah. I've said no well, I don't get it. Are you were proving that they're mysteries, or just I've I've because the point of this mysteries though they've been questioned. Yeah, I know that's that is the problem. <laughs> mysteries create questions though. Okay, we're 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 turning the mysteries into questions and having Jack answer them. That is our shtick. Okay, go. What's the next one, Adam? Okay, Roswell stroke Area Fifty One. So basically, yeah. in nineteen forty six, I think um, an alleged aircraft crashed. At a ranch near Roswell in New Mexico, 1940 something. I'm not knowing you. I think I'm trying to think. Cause 47. It, I think it might 47. It's 47 because in Indiana yeah. Jones 4, it's 1957 when it begins, yes. and he says 10 years. And so yeah, basically, <laughs> crash, crash at Roswell, and then ever since then we've been reverse engineering alien technology in Area 51. <laughs> what do you think? I can't wait for your answer on this one, Jack. What is in Area 51? So, well, supposedly. Well, I do know what it was actually used for. <laughs> what they had, what they isn't had, they bull? Had, they had German scientists from World War Two go there, and they were they carried on the work that they were doing in the war for the Americans in Area Fifty One, and that's where they. There's like loads of weird pictures of like aircraft things that look like saucers or whatever, and stuff like that. That's just crazy German stuff. It's propaganda that is that I think they were trying to show at the time that. Look at what we've made. We've made this saucer of thing which can hover about two or three feet off the air, and it was just to frighten um, Russia into thinking that they'd made something far yeah. more spectacular. Poor Russia. So yeah, uh, no, no. The answer no. is from Jack. No, it's not a mystery because there aren't aliens in there. Moving on. I, well, you know, this makes me sound like I don't think there could be other intelligent life. I yeah, just but you think they wouldn't be you d- interested enough in us. Yeah, yeah, and also they're definitely not here. They're not here. No. Okay, go go for the next one, Adam. Right. Okay. Think of a new right. Basically, this is a, this is a crazy mystery because this is this to me just doesn't really sound. It it just sounds like somebody's committed suicide. But again, but we got a man who's found on a beach in Australia. Um, he's dead. And sewn into his um, trouser pocket. We we need to be careful. Just keep this nice and friendly, or you know, dance around it yeah, so yeah, that yeah. it works. Well, he, sewn into his trouser pocket, he's got a piece of paper in a hidden uh, compartment, which basically just says um, it's got it's got code on it. And when mm. that was decoded, they found that it was to do with a poem. Uh, they went, um, they basically went to the library, found like decoded what was what was said, and tried to pick out several words ba- basically the message that he was trying to relay has never been decoded properly imagine so nobody knows if he was murdered mm. and nobody knows if he committed suicide this sounds well, like an elaborate suicide That's imagine imagine the, the police officers charged with that what now I need to go to a library and find an old bleeding poem and then decide what it means this is more like an art course but um so how did they know it was him who wrote it they, he's never been identified Oh, what? So, so man, you couldn't tell who it was? Identified. He just appeared on the beach. They don't know. Uh, because surely, was. if he was murdered, that would be written by the the person in question. Well, they don't know, do they? So. And it's okay. He's been caught up in some sort of conspiracy. So has he found out something which is very important? And has he been killed, or is he just well, a random bloke? Is it really that important if yeah. nothing yeah. has really happened? Has well, the question is, life? Jack. Was he killed or was it suicide? It's probably just an elaborate suicide. He probably had a very sad life where he <laughs> felt so unimportant. That he decided, I like how I you keep make, this show so cheery. I want to. I want to have an elaborate suicide. Joy, there. joyful cheeriness. Okay, moving on. Next. Well, I think we'll hit this one, one because it's in yeah. topic. It's 2012. Oh boy. The 13th Bactum and um, the end of the world, according to the Mayans. Mm. No, no, that, no, it doesn't say that the world's going to end. What's it say? It says that the ca- their calendar just ended. Their calendar <laughs> ends, but basically... <laughs> that's, like saying, that's like saying, you know, you got a calendar last year, it ended on the 31st of December. That's when all time that's, is over. That's, it's, that's done. You know what I found hilarious, right? What? Last year, yeah. I, lo- I was looking through calendars because I was getting um, a birthday present. Well, I was getting two birthday presents for uh, my girlfriend's twin sisters who are like nine. Mm-hmm. Well, not no, not birthday, Christmas. And you got the Mayan calendars. Well, no, I thought, 
one of them said they wanted a calendar. It's a weird nine-year-old. <laughs> and I was looking through them, and I saw a Justin Bieber calendar. And I was like, oh, well, this is a bit well, What are they going to put on every page? Just a picture of Justin Bieber. I looked at it, and it ended 30th of December. They didn't even add the 31st. This is yeah, like, man, I'm not. I'm not too surprised. <laughs> I'm not too surprised that Justin Bieber's people don't actually know how time works or dates. But regardless, at Damn least he's it. making money. Because basically, I think what the Mayan calendar says is that at the end of the thirteenth back turn, there is a, there isn't going to be another back turn. But at the end of the thirteenth back turn, it is God will return to Earth, and um, he's the God of love and but the God of war also. And did sure he? It doesn't say that. I don't know. I'm just reading stuff online. No, it, the calendar just ends. The okay. calendar, literally, they had the Bayans have loads of calendars. They loved making calendars. <laughs> they loved making time. They had they, they had, quite they had so much they were time about stars and time, and they made loads of calendars, and they just didn't make another calendar. Is that is that why a lot of their prophecies, air quotes, have come true? Just because there's so what many. Prophecies? Well, apparently they Which predicted ones? Katrina, and they this is also online information. <laughs> oh yeah, tsunamis um, and all sort of natural disasters. But I'd it imagine it's because it's can... sort of a splatter effect. It's mm. probably splatter effect. Yeah, they just like Nosferatu. You know Nosferatu. Yes, do. Dracula. He... No. Well, yeah, yeah. carry on. Oh, no. There was a prophet. He was famous for like you know, <sighs> like he was <sighs> whatever. Basically, <laughs> he's predicted loads of famous stuff, and I don't actually. I think I've gone confused. I'm thinking he's Nosferatu. <laughs> Well, you know, whatever. He's predicted loads of stuff, but loads of his other prophecies haven't come true. So, And there you go. That's, That's the confirmation of Look, existence if, of vampires. His, you know, if I'm wrong and it is the end of the world, you guys get to laugh for maybe two minutes and then die. <laughs> so... <laughs> please, please try and keep <laughs> this up, beat Jack. Like rapture man who was like, oh, there's going to be a rapture. Yeah, and then, and then it didn't happen and he said... Sorry, it's a bit late. Two weeks, then for they sure. They said that was going to happen in 2000. They said it was going to happen in 1896. They no, said well. the world was going to end. And then it didn't. And that's when the Jehovah's Witnesses were made and loads of other sects. They all split off to, from a, that single thing there. Oh, well. Um, oh, I just There is an interesting story about that what? one, the 1896. Some guy apparently threw himself out of a barn. Uh-huh. On the second floor, right when it like at midnight, because he thought he was going to be raptured and saved mm. before hitting the floor. That's hilarious. It's <laughs> <laughs> not hilarious. That's <laughs> tragic. <laughs> oh, Jack, please. Always happens in America. But um, let's move the conversation away because it's getting too bitter and too melancholy for even oh, me. It's, it's bitter to say, "Hey, guys, it's not the end of the world." Okay, fine. That's a nice <laughs> that's spin a, to leave it on. And also, thing. I want to talk about. Um, I mentioned it earlier. A video I watched recently, um, and it's titled like "Our oh, Kid Gets Beaten in Rap Battle by Teacher" or something. And I'm sure, I'm sure people at home have heard of it. If not, just search into YouTube or Google. It'll pop up. It's quite a popular one. And um, the first time I noticed it, I was like, "Okay, I'll give it a watch." And it was 20 minutes and I could not be asked. And I got two minutes in and got bored. And then someone made me watch it earlier today. And it is actually quite funny. And I'll tell you the premise. Basically, you've got this sort of arrogant, uh, stereotypical Chav kid. And he's really hyped. And um, he's rapping against one of his old teachers. And um, he's so thrilled to really lay it into this teacher. And then uh, he's all rapping about his mum and things. And being generally an unnice, naughty person. And then the teacher comes along and just goes old school poetry, really witty stuff on him. And it's just it's just a nice little thing. But what what do you th- what do you think of rap culture and just sort of rap battles? Because some of them are fun. Some of them are nice to listen to. I think they're really intelligent. Yeah. They're smart. They're quite weird. They're comedians in a way, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, some of it, rap does have a very dynamic... Uh, image because look at like 50 cent and stuff now i personally can't find too much intellectual substance Same. in 50 cents music Have i mean ever played his game oh blood on the sand yeah now that's i played a demo of it just to see how funny it was okay it was, was it it was horrible <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, you get to play as 50 Cent. For whole, a 50 Cent fan... The whole premise of that game is that you didn't get paid for <laughs> a charity gig. 
like a gig in Africa you were supposed to be doing for free. He didn't get paid by the guy, and the guy gives him a diamond encrusted skull, and then it's stolen, and then he goes ballistic just to get it back. <laughs> oh, Fiddy. Shot on so many occasions. Yeah, he. I guess I have to commend him for that. He's taken a lot of bullets. But we're running out of time. I think it's been a marvellous show, except for mild controversy, which we apologise for, and was merely for, for humour. Um, now we're going to play you a special song picked by our special guest, Mr Adam Bartlett, Somebody That I Used To Know by Gauthier. I quite I quite like this song at the minute. At the minute. Never at the minute. There's a great remix by Walk Off The Earth as well, where they um, play on one guitar. So if you see it online, give it, give it a little look. Yeah. Okay. Tweet in if uh, you like the show or if you just need something to do. We've been here and enjoyed it. Peace out. So long. Farewell. Off your design and good night from Afternoon Delight. Mm-hmm.